Okay, I'm going to troubleshoot something here from uh, one of my students. Uh, he's complaining, or saying, not complaining, he's saying that uh, the H2 database is hanging after an insert. So I uh, cloned his, or, or forked his GitHub repo, and uh, got a project opened up in IntelliJ, and I have not looked at this at all yet, so we're going to go through it, go through this live. I'm just going to take a, a look and see what we have here. So uh, we are running, okay, so we're running in Spring Boot 2. So that's some of the latest stuff here, and just going through seeing what, what we have in the dependencies. So nothing, nothing earth-shattering there. Uh, everything looks pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so we got the H2 database there. And I am going to run this and see if we can uh, duplicate what he's seeing. So we're starting up there in Hibernate, or Hibernate, Spring Boot. Uh, Tomcat is up on 8080. I'm going to toggle over to Chrome. I believe it was a change of customer, so he's following along with my data set. So I'm a big Burn Notice fan, so let's edit this. Okay, we do look like we've hung up there. And he also told me that uh, on the H2 database you could see the changes, so let's do that. I'm going to take a quick look at the H2 database. Okay, so my di update did not go through yet, so that change I made to Michael Weston's name has not persisted. Uh, it looks like we are... Okay, so we, we did time out, unable to acquire a JDBC connection, so let's take a closer look, see what's going on here. And I'm going to refresh that. Yeah, so our, our update definitely did not go through. But he is getting data. The database is working. Okay, so it's got the active profile of JPA DAO. Take a look at the services. I'll look at the customer JPA DAO implementation. So this will get invoked with that profile. Everything looks pretty accurate. I don't see anything jumping out at me. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here. And this should be the safer update action that he's getting to. And I am going to uh, stop this and rerun it in the debugger. And oddly, the stop has taken a while too. kill that process. Now let's bring it up in the debug. That's odd to see it, that uh, pausing like that. So that, that works. That's interesting. On the bootstrap it's working. So everything went through okay there. So let's try this again. Okay, he's in there. We have an entity matter factory. That looks okay. So we'll just step over that. Get the transaction. Commit. Returns it. That all looks okay. 
and that time it worked. That is odd to see it working in the debugger. So let's try going back. Refresh this. I want to make sure that it did in fact persist. So reconnect. So my update did happen. I added the 22 there. Let's change that again. So back in the debugger, I'm just going to go ahead and set play. And now we're seeing the same problem again. So we got a timeout there when we're trying to get the uh, transaction. And that looks like pretty standard stuff there. I'm going to pause this and re research it real quick. OK, did a little research there and looked into this a little bit closer. And I think I figured out what is going on here. So we have. A, and I'm a little bit rusty at this because I almost never use entity managers anymore. But we have the EM, and what we are not doing is we're not closing that connection. So I believe what was happening is that um, we were running out of uh, database connection. So under the covers, Spring Boot is going to be using a uh, pool of database connections. And we got up and got OK. And we're not explicitly closing that connection, so they're staying open. And we're essentially running out of database connection. So I, I put in on line 45 here to close out our entity manager to explicitly close it. And this is why uh, we like to use frameworks for this stuff, because you get into the raw stuff a little close and personal. And it's easy to forget stuff like this and cause uh, leaks like that where you're not properly releasing the database connection. So I'm going to bring this back up. And let's take a, a look at it. Uh, what's the path there? So let's go ahead and edit Mr. Weston uh, 2. You can see that went through right away. Let's go back to customers. And we'll edit him again. And now we are running into the same problem. So I tested this uh, before resuming, and it worked. And now we are not working again. So I am going to pause this and look at it a little bit closer. I thought that was the solution. OK, did a little more research there and looked at this closer. And what was happening, uh, I believe, is I went in and added close statements to the other. So um, we were leaving that entity manager open, and it's consuming all the connections in our database pool. That's why it's timing out. And while I took care of the one doing the update, uh, we had the others on the list and get uh, functions as well that were also leaving open connections. So we had to go in and close those. Now I'm going to toggle back over. I have it up and running with these close statements in, and I can come in, edit Mr. Weston. I'll just make a, a couple changes to him. And let's bring it back here. And let's edit Fiona. So that, that's working now. And we can see that I'm able to, to refresh. And everything's working normally. If I come in and continue doing edits, we can see that we're not exhausting the connection pool anymore. So 
I believe it, it was going in and adding in these closed statements to release the database connection. So we we're basically, I can't remember the exact default, I think it's around 20, 20 or 25 connections in that pool. And as we're running through this, the entity manager wasn't getting released and those connections were still being left in use. So when we hit that uh, 20 or 25 mark of open connections to the database, the next one when we're doing that update couldn't get a connection. And basically what happens is um, in the pooling situation, we're going to be going, hey, give me a, a database connection from the pool. And it waits, I think the default was uh, three seconds. And it's like, oh, can't get one. And then it tosses in an error. So uh, the, this is just a, a leak um, in the database connections. And this is why I prefer using something like Spring Data JPA over doing this. Uh, I do teach it in my older courses, and I'm probably going to add it into my Spring 5 course because it, there is a lot of legacy stuff where you're down uh, close to the database connection. So this is important stuff to, to use, but when you are using something like Spring Data JPA, all this is abstracted by the Spring framework for you, so you don't get that, that cozy. So you have a uh, tool set that is going to be managing the connections for you, and you don't have to, to worry about releasing them like you do here. And obviously this is a situation where you could pretty easily shoot yourself in the foot uh, by forgetting to close connection. And I've seen this in production systems where you do introduce code and you forget to release the connection, and uh, it definitely does cause you some headaches. So I am going to go ahead and commit this into GitHub so my student can get the example and uh, move along. So I think this is a, a pretty interesting, interesting problem. I didn't know what I was getting into when we uh, opened up this project, but uh, everything looks pretty good except for not having these closed statements. And I need to review my, my tutorial and make sure that I, I do, in fact, put the, the closed statements in there.